A conversation on raising leaders within a creative worship environment is a critical, important one. But let me tell you, after doing it for many, many years, it's probably one of the hardest things to do. Because if we're very honest, raising leaders is hard work. It's, it's much easier if, if you just want to do everything on your own. It's complicated working with people. But it's with people that we work as human beings and we have to figure out what it means to really get people to develop as leaders around us. Now, if, maybe like me, if you've been in situations where you felt, you know, it's much easier to do things on our own. Let me just quickly tell you why it's so critically important that we do raise leaders. Now, first of all, if you want to know what to do in life, follow what Jesus has done. It's a good example on any topic in life. So I just realized, look what he does, what's on his agenda, and do the same. Now, Jesus had 12 disciples, and he spent a lot of time with them. And they became this in, these incredible leaders that changed the world. And not only that, he said, guys, make disciples as well and teach them to follow the teachings of Jesus. So we have to raise people, it's a biblical mandate, and we have to raise them to become the leaders that God intended them to have. Now, not only did Jesus do it, Paul did the same thing. He wrote to Timothy and Titus, these, these young church leaders, uh, and they were all equipped through many investment moments from Paul to become leaders of the church then. So you and I are on the same boat. We have to get people to become leaders. Now, I've realized that we can easily get to a place where we think the sum total of what we can do, my ministry is where God wants it to go. If I can just be as good as I can with what I've been called to do, then that's my aim. But let me tell you, if that is the, the biggest dream you have for your ministry and where you are placed to serve, you are thinking way too small. God can do much more than what, what we can do on our own. And I think we only discover that once we raise people and see what the greater possibility might be. Now, we read this in Ephesians 3 verse 20 that says, Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Now, I've been guilty many times thinking, God, my dreams are incredibly big. You know, if you can just do all these things through me, and it's like God is saying, hey, buddy, there's much more than what's only in your life. And you can only discover that much moreness that God promises in the Word by getting other people to join you in your mission. So I thought, okay, if this is what the Bible is saying, then I need to figure it out and know what it means to get much more done. It's much more exciting than just seeing me do as, as well as I can. Now, on a third level, there's something else that really inspired me on how, why we should raise leaders. And we see that in Ephesians 4 verse 12, where Paul writes to the Ephesian church and explains all the giftings of pastor and teacher and apostle and prophet. And, and then he says to them, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. Now, many times I want to go, God, you equip me to do as well as I can in leading this organization, this arts ministry, this worship team. Where in fact, God said, no, 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 you have been positioned to equip other people to do their work. So it's a very important thing that we, from the Bible, must be motivated to do in order to get it done the way that God planned for church to grow. So what are our responsibilities then? If this is what the Bible is saying, we need to steward this process. Find ways, create a system where people can discover what God is saying about them and get them to find out what it means, what their purpose are as leaders and create that structure. And if you really wanna get people to follow in whatever system or organization you are building, you have to be very clear about what God is saying about that space. What is the vision? What is the dream? What is the mission we're on? So that's our responsibility once we realize how important it is for God. We have to really grow individuals. God has, has placed within everyone His Spirit and everyone has the ability to grow from that place to discover this immense calling and the beauty of what God has placed in each person, their gifting and their, their talents, everything aligning so beautifully to become a great individual. And that is our mission, to raise these leaders and get them to a place of significance. There's this beautiful African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Now, I know it's frustrating because many times you feel 
if I want to get it done, I'm just going to do it myself. You know, make sure that it is done well and do it all by yourself. And you will get speed and get things done. But it will never accumulate as much in terms of momentum as when you have a lot of people who understand their potential and really get at it with you as leaders, owning the ministry and doing it as well as they can. Now, how do you identify these leaders? Maybe you're in a ministry with five people, maybe 50, maybe 150. And for you to go, I need to get these people. I need to identify them, see where they are at. Who do you choose? How do you know who to get into your inner circle and develop? Now, a couple of things that helped me in my journey. I think Hebrew 13 verse 7, you have to go and read it a few times because it's a very critical scripture helping us to identify leaders in all walks of lives, but especially where you are ministering. It says, a leader must have a word worth listening to, a faith worth following, and a life worth imitating. Now you have to allow that to just to settle in your mind a little bit because it is critical for you as well and everybody that you're following, that you want to get to become leaders and to follow you. So there must be a clear passion. There must be a clear conviction in people of who God is. Whenever church leaders have been called, it should always be people that are not new in the faith, but people have really journeyed with God. They, they know who they are and they've got the sense that, you know, their faith has to get expression in another way of leading other people to become the fully fledged individuals that God called them to be. So you need to identify people who've got that conviction. They know who God is. They are secure in their faith. And you can see from them that there's life, there's fruit of the spirit, there's love. Uh, and they carry something of the weight of this revelation of who God is and who they are. Uh, many times we're overwhelmed with people who are eager. Let me tell you, an eager person who wants to do a lot is a great support, but not necessarily a leader. They have to carry something of the understanding of God's word in their life. And once you identify them, you will see over time as you pray into your team and you say, God, show me who are the people that you want to take to the next level. God will show you who they are because their fruit will show it to you. And over time, you will, you will see how people start following them, how they are prominent in the way that they're influencing people around you. And I'm pretty convinced that every time you pray that prayer, God will show you how these people are. Now, let's quickly think about how to create them once you identify them. You get, got people and you're saying, wow, incredible faith. People are naturally wanting to follow them and there's something of a conviction in your spirit they are ready to develop as leaders. So first of all, you need to consistently share with them your revelation of who God is and what God is saying in that moment to the space. If whoever you're identifying is not really connected with you in terms of the mission, where you're going, what you want to achieve, what God is saying, you will consistently find yourself at odds with these people wanting to do things that is different to the way that you want them to be and, and focusing in ways on different areas of ministry that you feel is not as important as what it is to you. If you want to have somebody come next to you, they must be very convinced of what God has said so that you will work together, pull together like horses that pull a cart or a wagon going in the same direction. So get people to understand what the current word of God is, what the vision is and what you know God has said. Then I think it's important to keep them accountable to that. That walk in faith must be something so convincing in their lives that people want to naturally follow them as they do want to follow you. So the overwhelming expression uh, and Walking with God, fruit that they will show must be something that you journey with them on to really invest into them spiritually, emo emotionally, and intellectually. I think once we do that, then we create the safe space, this consistency in which they can function, and it makes a stable environment possible for them to grow in it. But it must start in that kind of way. I think then once you identify them, you start investing in them, the next step is possibly where you go, what can they possibly lead? They must lead something in order to grow in that responsibility. And I think it's important that you then identify places where they carry weight in making that ministry possible. Something we find hard when we have to let leaders develop is to really give them responsibility because what if they fail? What if they have to lead this prayer moment and they do it all wrong and it's not as well as you want it to be? I think one of the very important things we have to do is take a bit of risk. The fact that God used you and me, he took a lot of risk. The fact that I'm 
even employed in the church. I would think, God, are you willing to take the risk in using me? So if God can take that risk with me, maybe we can take the risk with other people developing as well, but make it safe and choose small places of doing that. Maybe arranging a meeting or leading a conversation or sharing a short five minute word or lead that one song or do that one dance. Whatever that expression is, give them responsibility where it's safe to fail, but they can try something and they can develop in taking ownership and making it happen. Once you do that, it's very important, and I've failed many times in my learning process in doing that, is we give regular feedback. You need to tell them you did really well, but you forgot to call the people for the meeting. Next time, let them know what time to be there. Or, you know, it, it was a beautiful prayer meeting, but nobody else got a chance to contribute and you did everything. So next time, maybe try this. Or whatever the moment is you give to them, give feedback so that they can measure themselves according to what the standards are, did they do well and grow through it. I think too many times we just let them go. They fail in the way that we wanted to see happen and then we don't use them again because their first try didn't work out. Thank God he doesn't treat me that way. So maybe we should treat other people with grace, support them well, give them the feedback so that they know how to grow as leaders. In the whole process, regular interaction is critical. I think too many times I've been in the place where I said, listen, you're a great leader. A little stamp on the forehead, well done, a little star, go for it, you're doing really well. You're on your own now, see you in next year and hopefully you're still serving God. And I actually missed the opportunity too many times to sit with people regularly and talk about their experience of what we're doing. Do you still feel the passion? Are you still close to God? Do you see new development that we can think or dream about? Are we praying together? Are we really discussing what God is doing? To have such close connection that mentoring becomes part of this whole raising leaders conversation. It is so critical because people can very easily lose focus, become tired, or maybe start doubting in their own ability. But if we're sitting together constantly, then we'll understand how God puts us together in a way where development becomes in a way a fruit of our interaction. And that's quite important. Doxed as a family has got great ways to invest in leaders as well. And I wanna encourage you, if you have access to, and these days it's very easy to have access to the different training that we have as a family for leaders, engage people in processes like the City Change Equipping Program and the City Changes Leadership Process. And there are many others that really help people to develop in very official ways that they can systematically grow as leaders. You can measure it, you know what they're going through and content in discussion kind of set up uh, is worked through by these people and they can really grow in a significant intentional way. Equip our leaders in a in this process to really see them develop as they're growing in their capacity as leaders. There's a couple of lessons that I've learned in the process that I wanna share with you perhaps, and, and maybe you can learn from some of my mistakes, some of the things that God used me in as well that worked out. But one of the big things I learned in the whole process of raising leaders is to never love your gifting more than the people you are serving. And that to me was like a bit of a shocker. I realized sometimes I, I'm so grateful to be used by God. God, thank you for the opportunity to serve, to lead, to create things, that I love what God is doing in my life more than I love what God is doing in the lives of the people that I'm serving. Get to a place soon in your ministry leadership where you pray for people so much that your desire for them to develop is much greater than the desire for you to develop on your own. So let's love people when you worship, when you lead, when you create, when you guide people, may the passion for them drive you more than your desire to grow on your own. So I had to learn that. Another thing I learned was, is that God is not as much impressed with your gift as He is with your ability to activate the gift in others. It's one thing for a leader and you have to lead yourself and it's an important discussion on being a healthy individual, but that's the first step. If my children are grateful that they can tie their own shoes at the age of 25, I'll go, guys, that's great. You can tie your shoe, you're 25. Have you helped other people tie the shoes of, uh, the, the laces of their shoes as well? Are you just glad with your own ability? As a leader, you have to grow until you get to that point where you celebrate what God is doing in other people as a result of your engagement with them. So make that an aim for you. Say, God, how many people do I raise as leaders? The biggest compliment you can ever receive is when you are complimented not on what you have done on your own, but how you equip other people around you to do what they have done as a result of you leading them and guiding them to become leaders. I really find it as a great moment when teachers are complimenting me because of what my children have achieved. 
when they have become the leaders that God called them to be, and my two daughters and my son become uh, an expression of God's calling in their life, that is a much better moment than me hearing that I've done something great on my own. And I wanna encourage you to find those moments, enjoy them as well, pray for and expect God to do something so great that people will compliment you over time about what people in your team are achieving as a result of who you are. I wanna encourage you, be that one, pray for your people, pray for your team, say, God, show me the leaders and give me the best way to help them discover who they are and to really become the full-fledged city changes that God made them to be. It's a great journey. Enjoy as God is leading you as a leader in raising other leaders.